Hello everybody. So maybe you're wondering how I use my three swing systems to hit different shots on the golf course. I'll show you in just a moment. So for anybody who's been kind of watching my channel a bit longer, I think you all know that I try to teach golf with three different systems. So first of all, I'll, I'll teach my students what their shoulders and trunk are supposed to be doing. Then I'll teach them what their hips are supposed to be doing. And then finally, I'll teach them what the arms and hands are supposed to be doing. The question is, is does everything have to be doing everything when I've just got short shots? And, and a way of kind of breaking it down for a short shot is basically to say, well, really, if I don't need much energy, why should I use all the systems? I think you can basically say if I'm using all the joints in my body, it's going to be more difficult than if I'm just using a few. On the other hand, if I'm only just using a few joints in my body, I probably can't create enough energy for the shot. So the first thing is actually to look at the shot. And here I've got a kind of a short chip. Um, how much energy do I actually need? So what I would do is just get people to experiment, first of all, just using the first system and different golf clubs, which would just be basically turning the left shoulder down and the right shoulder down, the feeling of it being pulled down by the stomach muscles and therefore just creating a small kind of pendulum movement. And if I put the ball in the middle of that, then we've got a small chip. Now obviously it looks a little bit kind of stiff and it feels a bit stiff as well. But if I'm only going maybe five or six meters, probably it's enough and it's more reliable than maybe something which is using a lot of wrists and, and forward lean and such and such in the swing. What do we usually get people to do though if um, I'm getting them to kind of do a, do a shorter chip is hold the hips in the backswing still, but allow them to be kind of turned by the shoulders in the follow through. And this gives you a great deal more energy in the follow through and helps you to get a bit more distance. And usually if you add a different golf club, I've got a sand wedge here, but you can actually get a, quite a good distance and quite a nice flight, repetitive flight on the ball. And that's how I would kind of get people to make their short, first short chips. So the feeling is just it's coming out of system number one with a little bit of system number two on top. So when the distance gets a little bit further, like here where I'm trying to go over a bunker, doesn't really mean I've got to get the ball up in the air. A bunker is built into the ground, not in the air. So I think an awful lot of times when you're starting to get very wristy on these kind of shots to get loft and almost like a lob shot on it, it's probably, you know, like killing a mouse with a hammer. So what I try to do here is just allow the student to use their hips a little bit more in the backswing and in the downswing. So they would go from what was kind of the one and a half system to two system swing. So their hips are moving backwards and forwards with the sh shoulder routine. And, and basically that way, they've got more swing. So you can actually see, I was actually to hit it quite flat trajectory and it's rolled out quite a bit, but it's still adequate to actually get the ball over the bunker and get it on the green. And if I give the right choice of golf club, then I'd be able to move that exactly the right distance. That's a little bit better. Again, the less joints you use in the movement, the more reliable the movement is. And then it's all about kind of getting the right combination between the number of joints you're moving and the golf club that you're using. And that will give you the flight trajectory, spin and roll that you want for the shot. Things change a bit in a bunker because although the distance hasn't changed, the way I actually want to hit the golf ball has. I don't want to hit the golf ball, I want to hit under the golf ball. I also don't really want the club to be kind of digging in. I want it to more kind of glide under the golf ball. But I'm going to lose a lot of energy because of the sand. So I need club head speed. That means I really need all three systems. Um, but I need a flat angle of attack. And that means really I'm better off without the, the wrists. So that's a tricky one. So what we do here is we use the first and the third system. That means I'm concentrating on making this movement and also using my arms and hands. And I do that by basically turning the body and letting it pull the hips around, the arms come up, and then turning the body and letting the arms release and almost resisting a little bit with the lower body. And the reason for this is I want to release the club early. That will flatten out the angle of attack, but give me the club head speed that I need. So a little bit wider, a little bit more on the knees. I'm going to turn, hinge, 
and release. That was quite a good one, I think I'll stop there. Now obviously I can vary the amount of each system that I set into a swing, but when I get to the, the longer distances where I'm trying to use all three systems at the same time, really the biggest danger is that my unconscious mind actually tries to use too many joints. That means it's trying to hit the golf ball usually too far. And this is where you've got to get objective. I'll do a, a video about kind of reality, objectivity in your golf swing. But the main trick here is basically to know how far you can hit each club in the bag and not want more than you can actually produce so that your, go your golf swing is remaining within its physical limitations and moving as fast as it can whilst coordinating the golf swing and you're not trying to hit the golf ball, the cover off the golf ball every time you stand there. That way there's a chance of you staying in the axes, keeping a nice plane and that way you should be able to hit nice shots with not too much effort. As ever, if you've enjoyed the video, please hit the like button subscribe if you haven't already. If you're interested in my philosophy on golf, um, there's a PDF that you can download for just 99 cents that helps to support the channel and get me back here a bit more often instead of teaching for a living. Uh, not that I don't love it. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed it, we'll see you again next time. Cheers. Bye.